So this uh, little video is about uh, ring pest rays and uh, how to remove, clean, and reinsert them. The objectives of this session are to um, walk you through the removal process, cleaning, and reinsertion of the ring pest ray, and also to how to understand the complications that can arise from the use of a ring pest ray, and how to prevent and manage that. So with any new type of um, um, procedure, the technique of, of dealing with pessaries, removing them and reinserting them, is something you master over time. And every patient's pessary is slightly different. Uh, keeping the patient comfortable is one of the most important things that you want to ensure before, during, and after the pessary change. Verbally preparing the patient and explaining what you're going to be doing so the patient knows in advance and during the process what to expect and what is happening. Working slowly and carefully and observing the patient for any signs of discomfort is important. Making sure that you lubricate the introducing portion of the pessary with water-soluble lubricant so that it slides in easily is another tip. The removal of the ring pessary is essentially quite simple. Uh, it sits around the cervix uh, up in the top of the vault. You need to be able to identify it um, by pushing, inserting your finger into the uh, vagina, finding the ring, slipping your finger over the edge of the ring and pulling it down and then towards you and then turning it on its side in order to remove it. So when we remove the pest ray, you will notice that it will have some discharge on it, um, hopefully no signs of bleeding, uh, but there is a bit of a debris that can build up depending on the, each individual patient. And so we want to make sure we wash it really well with mild soap and water. Uh, you can do this um, either in a container that's large enough to submerge the device in like a, a sterile basin, or you can take it to the sink and um, wash it with soap and water there and just ensure that you really are able to soak off anything that's on it and be able to scrub around the edges um, if there's any debris that you feel needs to be removed. Uh, once you've scrubbed it off and removed all the visible residue, then you rinse it under tap water for about 30 seconds and then dry it uh, and it's ready to be reinserted. Uh, the ring uh, pessary insertion is relatively easy. Uh, the pessary itself folds in half like a taco. You'll notice on the um, inside edge of the pessary there are two notches across from each other that show you where to fold it. You want to keep the pessary in the, uh, make sure you lubricate the edge of the pessary before you go to insert it. It is often useful when you have the pessary folded in your right hand, assuming you're right-handed, uh, that you keep the um, arch of the, pe of the pessary upward uh, so that it's like a, a bridge. Uh, when you're inserting it, if you then are able to slowly insert it into the back of the vagina, when you open it, the pessary will then naturally pop up behind the cervix and allow you to push it up in the front. Ensure that it is um, positioned properly so that it's comfortable for the patient. And then um, if you take your finger inside the ring and do a quarter turn to the right or the left, that will help to lock it into position. Most vaginal pessaries are relatively simple to, to manage, and we don't get a lot of complications with them. But I did want to take a few minutes to talk about some of the things that can occur and give you some sense of how to manage them. Uh, pessaries in general are changed every two to, to four months, uh, depending on the individual patient. So vaginal discharge, bleeding if it's related to erosions or ulcerations, and bowel dysfunction are the most common uh, complications that we see. Vaginal discharge is probably the most common um, thing we see and it, a lot of it depends on uh, whether or not the a patient is using some uh, vaginal cream such as Premarin um, for support of the vaginal tissue. It is a pretty normal response to having a pessary in place and uh, the vaginal discharge should usually be a creamy yellow greenish um, in, in um, color. Um, it can also be a bit thick um, and creamy in uh, texture. Uh, I do notice that it tends to occur more towards the date when the pessary is due to be changed, and it may be that you just need to increase the frequency of the changing of the vaginal pessary. So for example, women who choose to have their pessaries changed every three to four months uh, and are complaining of this kind of discharge, I might be tempted to move them up to two to three months to see if that has an impact on the discharge. Uh, th 
I would only consider swabbing the discharge um, in case there was any type of vaginal infection. If there was a foul odor to it, or if the patient had any redness and irritation that was visible, or if they were describing any type of itch. Uh, quite commonly, what I would do is take the pessary out and leave it out for a few days and give them a break from it, let the discharge clear up, and then reinsert the pessary. And usually, there's no further issues with it. It can also be related to um, the use of their vaginal estrogen or vagifem, which they may be using. Uh, and if uh, you may want to reduce or increase the amount that they're using, depending on the amount of discharge. Uh, I also find that moisturizing gels such as Replens or Gynotroph are, are helpful in reducing discharge. So vaginal bleeding um, can be a sign of some type of an erosion or, erosion or ulceration that has occurred um, as a result of the pessary rubbing on the, on the vaginal tissue. So we want to be careful to pay attention to any um, complaints that the patient may have of spotting or bleeding. Um, it should be noted, however, that I also that I found that when patients are straining with a bowel movement, um, which we're going to talk about next, um, they may experience a small amount of spotting at that point in time because of the straining, and that is not necessarily something you need to get uh, concerned about. Uh, however, when you remove the pessary, um, you're going to take a moment to run your finger around the inside of the vaginal tissue to inch and do a sweep to see if you um, can identify any bleeding that is evident. You will have noticed on the pessary when you removed it whether there was any evidence of bleeding on the pessary. Uh, and if there is evidence of bleeding, then you want to feel and see if you can feel any type of an erosion that you think may be present. Uh, it would be at this point that you may want to insert a small speculum to have a look to see if anything's going on. If in fact you do identify uh, an erosion, then the pessary should remain out uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, and you may want to use, ensure that the patient is using some Premarin vaginal cream um, or Vagifem on a, on a regular basis to help with the healing process. If there is no sign of an erosion, then it may be that the pessary has become too large and it would need to be resized, in which case, uh, if you're able to provide a resizing within your own practice, uh, that would be an option. Otherwise, a referral to a gynecologist may be necessary to ensure that the correct size of pessary is being utilized. Bowel dysfunction is another issue that we need to consider, uh, primarily that of constipation. The, the pessary, depending on the, the type and style, does increase the pressure in the rectum and can contribute to the patient having to strain with a bowel movement. We don't want the patient to be straining with a bowel movement primarily because there's the potential for the pessary to come out of the vagina uh, and would then need to be reinserted. We need to encourage the patients to ensure that they're drinking enough fluids and consuming enough fiber in their um, daily diet and if they're not to encourage them to increase that. Make sure that you ask them about their bowels and if they're moving regularly uh, and if they're constipated so that we can prevent you can prevent that from occurring. Uh, one other strategy that can be effective if they have issues with constipation and are, do have to strain with a bowel movement, and that is to ensure that they put their finger in front of the vagina uh, to hold the pessary back in the vagina while they're having a bowel movement, and that can be effective as well. Follow-up pessary care really depends on each individual patient, but usually every two to three months. Uh, it depends when you remove the pessary what condition the vaginal tissue is in. So if it's irritated, you may want to do it more often. Um, if they're using a vaginal moisturizer uh, and it's easy to remove the pessary and reinsert it, then probably you have the right um, amount of time that you're currently following. Uh, when the pessary becomes difficult or tight to remove, then often increasing it to a more frequent um, changes will help with that. Uh, one thing is very important to remember is that pessaries cannot be ignored, forgotten, or left in place. Uh, I, I encourage you to uh, book the next pessary appointment before the patient leaves the office so that they have that in place and to keep track of when they are due to come in. In conclusion, I hope this short video has, be, 
that's been helpful to you and that you're able to watch it as many times as needed to feel confident with doing your pessary care. Uh, you will also find that uh, enclosed with the connection for this video was an information health sheet for each of your individualized patients that um, provides you with written instructions, primarily the same as what I've talked about in this video.